positively have, identify yourself for that contract yeah. and you have to be able to be identified. Mm -hmm. Great. Not just I am, or not just I could be, but I am. Exactly. Right? Otherwise that's bad faith as well. Right. But as long as I don't do so with fraudulent or, or intent, malice, uh, I can call myself. It all comes down to intent. We're going to expand on all this afterwards. I was told the philosophy when you go into the courtroom is supposed to be uh, that a name is defined by Webster's as, as that which a object or thing is known. And a definition of a word is a speech sound or series of speech sounds. So how can you identify as a speech sound? How can you live in a speech sound? How can you do anything as a speech sound? You need to be addressed to something. Absolutely. I mean, I... I well, that's the thing. Is the argument was that um, yeah. you, your role in the courtroom is more important than the name. Yeah. Yeah. So well, so, so, so this is where I'll get on to why it's actually, why people got to stop. The same way that people have to stop fearing, you know, uh, the government finding out who you are. Like, I don't care. My name's on a whiteboard. Yeah. They know where I live. Believe me, you guys have seen my paperwork. If they don't know where I live to come and get me or shoot me or throw me in jail, then they're never going to find out, right? I, you got to stop fearing them, right? And in order to stop fearing them, you got to stop fearing this name as well. And I'm going to get into the reason why, because you can actually turn it around to your advantage at that point, and that's what we're going to get into, uh, which is the biggest point of everything I'm ever going to make, and that might even have to wait for other days, is, is the issue of liability. You don't care what name they're calling you. I don't care what name they're calling me. It all comes down to liability. Who's assuming liability for the claims being made, right? And then we get into the other forms of law, which is the contract. Where's the contract? You know, who's compelling me to perform in this contract? I don't care what you're calling me. But you, but you got to provide the evidence that I've been compelled to perform in this name in a, in a contract somewhere. Call me whatever you want, really, because ultimately my name is just three letters long, man. Anything after that is just a construct. It's a fiction. Everything after that is a fiction. Whether it's the all cap, whether it's Dean, all capital Dean, all capital only Clifford, those are all constructs. They're just different versions of me for different purposes. And we can't be scared of any of them. We just gotta learn how to master them all, which we can do because we're men. We're full unlimited liability. You know, we, we create our own destinies, we do whatever we want, we take control of things, we're full liability. And you gotta learn to actually just to start to, to pilot this stuff and use it. And say, yeah, yeah, you got, you got that, yeah, you got it right, that's me. What's it to you? Right, instead of, no, no, you know what, no, that's, that's, not, that's not my name. I, I'm, not, I'm, not a, I'm not a person, right? You can use the, the, the legal, you can use the argument, well, do you want the legal person or do you want the man, right? The only reason that works is because what you've done now is you've differentiated the fact that there is a difference between the two names. And you've introduced that also, but even that could be, well, you know, you're all just one, one same party. But the, the, the whole point is, is once you, once you basically separate the, uh, the, separate the name, so now there's, you know, you've separated this, this name from that name. Now there's two of us. And they only want that name. And that name is now floating out there because you're saying, well, I'm over here, I'm the man, and uh, the legal name is right here. You're, not, you're distancing yourself from it, but you're not denying that it's you in some capacity because you can still act in that capacity. And that's why you've heard people go to court and make the argument, well, you know, which capacity do you want me here in? Do you want me here in the capacity of the man or do you want me here in the capacity of the driver? <coughs> According to the Highway Traffic Act, do you want me here in the capacity of this, capacity of that, capacity, you know, I could be anything you want me to be. Which hat do you want me to wear? That's exactly. Because that's all that name is, is it's a presumption, it's just a broad, it's just something, just to get you there. And then hoping you're not going to know how to make the proper, um, not arguments, but, but navigate yourself through the court properly. And that is, well, what, what, what binds me to that? You know, you guys are calling me this, um, what is that bound to? Where's the contract? What obligations am I bound to perform in that? Did I agree to it? Was there valuable consideration? What was I supposed to perform? I was I aware of all the, yeah, and that's the rules of contract. Then we get into that kind of stuff, right? So you got to be able to know how to, to get into that kind of stuff. And we'll get into all that kind of stuff later, but then there's, you know, the talking to the judges and the judges ordering you around and ordering the sheriffs and stuff like that. That's all. But the big problem was we wanted to address what the name was. And I don't even tackle the problem of, of, of trying to come up with what that name is because, again, that's all it is. It's a presumption. It's a presumption that you are that. And it's a presumption there's a contractual obligation. It's a presumption that you're operating in some capacity. And then you just have to dismantle the presumptions at that point. 
because that's what the courts operate on is presumptions, right? So uh, to go further from there, I guess, uh, actually I didn't really have much of a way, uh, much in the way of a, a template to work on tonight with this, but um, okay, where to go from there would be why we're in the problem we're in. And I was speaking with people about this a couple years ago and it finally sank in about a year and a half ago when we got into the whole trust law issue and why, and the different law forms. And why trust law? Because you've got all these, these differing levels of, of, of law um, that just have different authorities, different jurisdictions, and different levels of force. Um, and you've got obviously statutory law, which is the lowest inferior form of law there is on the planet, right? It's like, uh, it's public servant codes is what I call it, right? If you're a trash collector, just regulations. it's just, well, it's regu well, there's regulations in all sorts of different forms of law, but statutory law itself is the lowest form of law. It's, yeah. Why? Yeah. Why, yeah. Why do they? Well, why do they call it public? Well, that's that's any form of law. But why do they call them public servants? Right? They're servants. They're those are the slaves of society. Right? They're supposed to serve everybody. They're the public servants. Those, so the statutes are actually public servant codes. It's criminal code of Canada. It only applies to people that work for the government, agents of government, and they're all public servants. If you make the argument that. She's not. Okay. Which, well, hang on. We, we could get into the argument of which Her Majesty. So I could rattle off about eight right now. Her Majesty or Her right? Majesty. So, yeah, we're not even going to get into which Her Majesty or, or what Her Majesty is or whether she's a servant or whether she isn't a servant. We're all servants of God. Every single one of us. Period. Beyond that, doesn't matter. But that's the highest now. Okay. Sorry if I have to interject. I have to interject right now. Yep. We're all students of Earth. Okay. <laughs> Different philosophy on life, but so. it's the same thing. But okay, uh, if I, I could actually expand on that, then if we're servants of God, um, that would automatically make us uh, students of the earth, because when He went away and gave us dominion over the earth, He charged us with its care. Yeah, that's the problem. So those are actually synonymous theories. Okay. Yes, I totally agree. With that. Okay. So, and that takes us to the highest form of law. I just talked about the lowest form of law, which is the servant class. And they've got everything flipped on us now. They, they've got us convinced in the public education system that government is, they're, they're the masters. We're, we're, we're the yeah. And we're the servants. And it's, it's completely the opposite way around. Well, in school, you are a public servant. Like, when you take the kid to school, it's... I wouldn't agree with that. But we won't get into that right now. So, so why are we in the mess that we're in? And it's, it's easy to see what happened is, and uh, we all know about the Catholic Church and the mystery schools and how they used to encode everything and uh, they would phrase things in different words to hide technology and theories and our rights and the whole nine yards. And, and it really struck me when I read a couple of books and uh, uh, one in particular, uh, was it Ellen White, The Great Controversy? I read that and I read a couple other books on religion and I, everything for some reason came back to the, whole, the Holy Trinity. And I've broached this topic before at some of our meetings and that's where we start to get into trust law, which is what the Holy Trinity is. And that's why the Holy Trinity is so important, because trust law requires this three-party contract. That is trust law, right? And that's what the Holy Trinity is. And the Catholic Church likes to call it what the, 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 the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, right? So we got the Father. We got the Son. Holy Ghost, back to the Father. So, it just, a uh, couple of things hit me in the last couple of years. I was just sitting around, I was just reading parts of the Bible, and I got thinking about it, and reading some definitions in Black's Law Dictionary. I'm kind of dorky like that. Saturday afternoon, I'll be sitting at my beach house, and I'll read a definition in Black's Law Dictionary just for fun, and I'll be like, oh, I don't know that word. So I'll look up that one. And I'll find a word in that definition I don't know. So I'll look up that word, and I'll just spend six hours doing that. And I got through that, and I do the same thing nerd. in Bouvier's Law Dictionary. Yeah, nerd. <laughs> yeah, and it, this may even be common knowledge for a lot of people out there in the movement. I don't know if people really understand what it is, but, I mean, uh, the Bible is God, God's last will and testament. And people never really think about that, about what it is, about what a testament is. And if you look up the definition of the word testament, testament is something left by the testator in a will. Like your last will and testament. So you look at, oh, okay, well, last, last, you know, it's, it's uh, um, 
the last testament of God or whatever, the, the God's testament, to, it's the last will and testament of God is what that turns out to be, where if you look in the Holy Trinity and you start to realize what we got here is trust law going on, is the Father, who is God, is the testator. And he's also the grantor. So he created man. He did his whatever seven days. Okay, I'm not going to get into what that actually means. It doesn't matter. It's all encoded. It's all riddles. He came along. He created the planets. He created us. Whatever you want to believe that means is up to you. It really doesn't matter. So he created us. Right? And he gave us dominion over the earth. So he made us the beneficiary. <laughs> Right? And what else would we have been? I, I call it the executor. Right? You don't want to be the trustee. Well, when you say dominion, this is uh, the same sense as yeah. they say dominion of Canada? Like, ah, you know what? Dominion means like doesn't matter. Authority over yeah, like dominion of Canada. Yeah, it's, I mean, they used to have dominion groceries. <coughs> Okay, same thing. Yeah, what's the, exactly, what's, what's in a word? What does it mean in that particular usage, right? So the Holy Ghost. Um, isn't it weird that it's actually called the Holy Ghost? It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a ghost. It's something that doesn't really... It's a fiction. It's a fiction. It doesn't really exist. So they probably changed in, in trust Pastor law. It doesn't exist? <laughs> <laughs> no shit, eh? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we, so we got this legal fiction over here, or... Uh, Think about it, a ghost is form without substance. It's form without substance, right? But it's, it, it, it completes... Well, that's what a legal fiction is. Straight up. That's what a legal fiction is over here. So, i um, trying to think of the proper word to explain that. So, um, I could explain that better. I'm not going to, because um, it's been a really long day, and I could get into that more. Uh, just uh, while we're on the topic of uh, what we're talking about, Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, safety break. Yeah. So these, uh, the, so in trust law, you got the you got the three parties. And if you've ever read the trust handbook, you know that this isn't a very accurate diagram. In trust law, you've got the executor, you have got the beneficiary, and you've got the uh, trustee. The trustee is who holds all the property, right? The trustee is the slave. The trustee. Um, yeah, that's why they call it even a fiduciary trustee, right? And the, the trustee is who holds all the property in trust, and they have to obey the instructions of the executor for the benefit of the beneficiary, right? right? And that's where the trust law, and, uh, and this is getting into why we're having the problems we're having in the courts and the proof we've got of everything that's going on. This I'll explain better another time when I've had a chance to review what I had to go through months ago to come to that conclusion because it's not all coming to me right now. But either way, all is important, as you know damn well, just from the Bible, that the last testament of God is the last will and testament by the testator, he who created the trust, who left, who went away and left, and left us as the executors and beneficiaries of everything he left us. But it's all being held in trust by the trustees, right? And that's what makes the trust law complete, is the fact that the, tr the trustee cannot be the executor or the beneficiary, and a beneficiary or executor cannot be a trustee. Period. So what happens is when we're walking into court, and this is all stuff we can elaborate on later. I'm just kind of going through this real quick right now to bring everybody to have questions later. When we walk into court, what's happening, and I've heard every argument on the planet, people told me to walk into court and be the trustee. Good. No, you got to walk into court and you got to be the trustee. The trustees hold all the power, right? Like, I mean, there's a million different theories out there, exactly, right? We all know government's the trustees. They're all public servants. They're all public trustees. Every single one of them. They're all the servants. They're the ones that hold all property for the benefit of the executors and the beneficiaries of all these estates. And I'll get into whatever you want about that later. Prisoner, trustee is a prisoner with special privileges. Yeah. Well, you know, if you err, do they offer you correction as a benefit? Well... I could I could make a bunch of arguments on that as well and I don't believe that at all. Um